Welcome to the Joy of Cruising podcast with your host, award-winning author, Paul C. Thornton, a weekly conversation with the amazing cruisers featured in the Joy of Cruising books comprised of The Joy of Cruising, Cruising Interrupted, new release, The Joy of Cruising Again, as well as other fun, informative, global cruise personalities. It is the next best thing to cruising, hearing about cruising from the unique and diverse perspectives of Paul's amazing guests. If you hear about a cruise that interests you, book it at www.thejoyofcruising.net. It helps support the channel through our partnership with Where's Walters Travel. We really appreciate your feedback, so leave us a text. Paul can't reply, but he may read your text on air. Hello, passionate cruisers. This is Paul. And I am delighted to welcome this week on the Jerv Cruising Podcast, Kathy and Emma, creators of Cruise Addicted, YouTube channel, blog, Facebook page, and Instagram platform. And shortlist candidate for the 2024 The Wave Awards, favorite cruise influencer. Let me set the stage by pointing out that The Wave Awards is the UK cruise industry's premier award. Included are award categories for cruise lines, ships, travel agencies, and cruise influencers. As you are aware, I greatly appreciate cruise bloggers, bloggers, and influencers, and have written about them extensively. In the Joy of Cruising books, I called them cruise community champions. I've interviewed every winner and virtually every shortlister since I have been involved with the cruising industry. Some trivia. The very first person who agreed to be featured in my first book in 2018, when I was just a voice on the internet, was a Wave Award winner. 23-year-old Emma Latisse, now of Emma Cruises, who I reached out to after she won the Wave Award for her Cruising is Not Just for Old People blog. Love that name. This year's award ceremony will be held in London in November. Most of this year's favorite cruise influencer finalists have been featured in the books or uh, guests on the podcast. Cruise Addicted has not. Love that name as well. And I thought this was a great opportunity to get to know Kathy and Emma and to share passionate cruiser stories with the cruise community. I love this time of the year when the Wave Awards are pending because it always presents opportunities to enlarge my circle of global cruise friends. Kathy and Emma is the dynamic duo behind the scenes of Cruise Addicted. Fueled by a shared passion for cruising, they bring a wealth of experience in travel, business, photography, and writing. While rarely spotted together, their backgrounds blend seamlessly to offer you a unique perspective. With almost 50 years of combined cruising expertise, from planning, booking, packing, filming, writing, To pure enjoyment, they are the driving force behind Cruise Addicted. Welcome, Kathy and Emma, to the Joy of Cruising podcast. Great to be here. Oh, thank you for having us, Paul. Uh, How are you both doing? I know you're in different places, so so let's start with with Kathy. How are you doing, Kathy? I'm really great, Paul. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm in Kent in the UK and it's dark here now, so um, it's been raining and it's otherwise been a fairly normal day. All right. And uh, how are you, Emma? I'm in Barbados. Actually, well, no, I'm not. I lie. It was worth a try. It was worth a try. It's just a filter. I am sat, I live on a little island at the bottom of England called the Isle of Wight. So when you sail in and out of Southampton, I stand on the beach and wave. So not today because it's pouring with rain. So if anybody has sailed today, I'm sorry, I I didn't see you out. But I'm sat down in the south of England and it's normally a beautiful, sunny place to be. Now, for the listeners, this is an audio podcast. So when Emma says she's in Barbados, she's got a background of Barbados behind her. So for a second, she had me going. (laughs) Sorry, Paul. (laughs) Uh, uh, Before we discuss specifically 
uh, Cruise Addicted. Tell our listeners about yourselves, where you're from, where do you live, well, you kind of just said where you live, but but uh, background, anything you would like to share. So let's, let's go uh, clockwise, start with you, Kathy. Well, yes, yeah, so I'm from Kent. I live in the countryside. I'm not like Emma sitting by the sea. I live right in the middle of the heart of sort of farming land in the southeast of England. Um, but I've always loved the water. I love to sail as a child and uh, sort of got into cruiser racing as I got older and then got into cruising proper as I got even older. So uh, water is very much in my blood, even though I live in the sea. Married to Tony, two grown-up daughters, three grown children. Yeah, there you are, Emma. <laughs> Don't forget the dog, <laughs> Sorry, oh, two dogs, yeah. Oh, so, Emma, <laughs> tell us all about yourself. So I'm married to Dave, uh, two grown-up children, well, 23 and 26. Uh, my eldest is a third officer with Cunard. So we have quite a nautical family ourselves. Like Kathy, we like sailing and uh, water sports. When you live on an island, the beach is only a stone's throw away. Um, our island is shaped like the diamond. So when you look at the UK on the map, we are the little diamond underneath Southampton. So we are where the sun shines and we sparkle from, from our island. Um, I live in countryside, actually, though. I live in farmland about five miles from the beach. And I have a crazy cat. So Kathy has the dogs and I have the cat. And... Um, my husband and my kids, they like to cycle. They spend a lot of their time road cycling and we like to go to music festivals and uh, we like to have parties, beach parties and lots of parties. <laughs> Sound, sounds good. Now, I missed a little bit. You said your son works for Cunard and he does what? He's a third officer. Well, actually, he's just training. He's a deck officer. So he's just gone back to, to the classroom for five months to get his chief mate's license, which will make him first officer. So he just has to make sure he passes the exam. So have you have you cruised Cunard when he's been on? To his embarrassment, yes. <laughs> so tell me what you did to embarrass him. <laughs> Everything. I think just walking up the gangway was enough. <laughs> <laughs> did he have you? Did he have you um, up on the bridge? Yeah, well, we're lucky enough that we are close to Southampton, so we I can pop over and have lunch with him and more pick up his, you know, winter clothes if he's heading to the sun, or take over some warmer clothes if he's heading to to colder climate. So when it's a turnaround day, I can pop and see him, so he can cope with that. But when we when we sailed last time with him actually on a cruise and he was on the the mooring wings that come out at the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the bow of the ship where they um, where they moor the mooring stations they're called but I could lean over the side with my camera and I could see him on the mooring stations and he was on the walkie-talkie and concentrating very hard and I'm going ah, <laughs> So I think that probably embarrassed him enough. <laughs> so so uh, talk about, let's talk about cruising. Talk about each of your first cruises. What ship? When was it? What were your initial impressions? Kathy? Uh, 2001, I went with my parents. So they were massive cruise fans and they have been cruising for about 25 years at that point. And I'd sort of vicariously watched them going all over the world and being really very, very jealous. And when it was their golden wedding anniversary, they decided to take the whole family. So my, my husband and I, our two girls, my brother and his wife, their two boys, my parents. We had five balconies in a row, opened all the doors, um, and I just loved it. I loved everything about it. And I'd always thought I would. So it's very unusual when when you really want to do something and then when you do do it, it's even better than you thought it would be. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I really, really just took to it. And that was P&O Aurora, um, which is, funnily enough, a lot of UK cruisers' first ship. I don't know why, but a lot of people say, oh, yes. Um, 
So, yeah, we didn't go very far. We just went up to Zeebrugge and down to the Channel Islands and oh, we just had such a lovely time. Um, and then, yeah, completely hooked, really, from that moment on. I was I was just getting ready to ask you that were you were you hooked immediately and sounds like you were yeah so yeah so so you knew you were going to get back on a cruise ship how how long was it before you got you got back on a cruise ship I think it was about a year maybe two um, and we we booked another short cruise just my husband and I and we, we thought well we'll try. Uh, and we booked a Royal Caribbean Independence of the Seas and we went to um, Cove in Ireland for the weekend. Um, so it was very, very different, much younger line, much buzzier. Um, and we thought, oh, yeah, no, we can do this too. This is great. Um, we loved that too. So uh, then we booked a transatlantic on Queen Mary too. So we thought, fine. And really, from there on in, we probably cruised once or twice a year, you know, going forward, really. Um, so, yeah, love it. Love it. So you're you're like uh, most of my guests. You got hooked immediately. I, I asked everyone that question. Uh, I used to I used to keep a tally because I, I once surmised that 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 90 percent get hooked right away. And I, I, I actually was taking doing a tally, and I was easily over ninety percent. So, so I do occasionally run into folks who are not hooked right away, and they they get hooked later on. Uh, how about how about you, Emma? What was your first? Well, I, I pre children. I was a travel agent. We were a cruise oh. travel agent, so they sent me on my first cruise when I was twenty one, last year. Oh, recently. <laughs> Very recently. So I'm I'm still new to it. Um, so yeah, uh, if only. So it was on Fred Olsen's Black Prince, tiny little ship, 26, 27,000 tons, used to be a car ferry. So what they had done, where the car space was on this vessel, they didn't really fill it with anything. So it was a little bit um a little bit unbalanced when it became a cruise ship. And it had quite a, an unusual feel when you sailed on it. And I, I'd never been more seasick in my life. Oh, my goodness. And I went to the reception and I said, I'm so seasick. And she handed me two tablets and she, uh, she said something along the lines of, um, we don't charge for these because we don't, uh, we don't charge you to be seasick. So we don't charge you to cure it either. So <laughs> something along those lines. And um, I got back and I'd really enjoyed it, even though I needed to see the horizon. I was sort of hooked, thinking, how am I ever going to afford to do this on a mere travel agent salary? Um, and then it wasn't before um, too long that I actually ended up on the QE2 with my mum. So we actually sailed on the, the great ocean liner QE2. Um, so I took my mum and, and then my mum was hooked. So it's quite addictive, really, from the start. So, so QE2 was your second cruise. Now, weren't you a little worried, a lot worried about getting seasick going I, trans? Yes. Well, that was transatlantic, right? Oh, no, no, no. She used to do um, some regular holidays as well. So okay. you could just do a two-week holiday down to the Mediterranean. She did all sorts as well as transatlantic. So, um, I, yes, I was right, and everyone had said how the Bear Biscay could be um, pretty scary and this was autumn so it could have been a bit choppy um, but I went armed with seasick tablets and didn't need any of them so a completely different experience. Are, are you pretty much over seasickness now? Never been seasick again. Wow. It was literally just that ship there was something quirky about her where it was a converted car ferry living on an island I've got no option but to get on a boat um, or a ferry or a hovercraft if I wanted to go to the mainland. And I'd never been sick any other time. It was just that one time. And I thought, oh, maybe this isn't for me. But yeah, I, I pursued and went again and it was fine. So so uh, both of you, it sounds like, cruised uh, well before the pandemic. Kathy, give me some highlights of some of your, your earlier cruises. When I say earlier, 
uh, BC <laughs> before COVID. We, we did all sorts of sort of cruises. We did quite a lot of long distance cruising, trans, trans, transitioning cruises. Um, we went through the Suez Canal and we went out to the Middle East and then we, we went from the Middle East out to um, Singapore. We cruised out of Singapore and went up to um, Burma. So we, we did some really interesting sort of long distance cruises. And I, I definitely discovered that I'm I'm happier on real long sea voyages almost. I love sea days. Um, I, I do, I love going ashore, but I like the rhythm of life when you're at sea. So I, I'm a great one. If I've got the time, I like to, to do that. Um, and then uh, my my parents continued to cruise, and then suddenly my dad died. Um, and I think the last cruise my mum did, we we took her on Queen Victoria, funnily enough. Um, and we all went down to the Med for two weeks. So that was a, a very special time um, to cruise with mum, just just the three of us. And uh, you know, it really was the last thing she did. So to be able to cruise with people at different points in their life whether they're children or whether you know by that point she was in a wheelchair um is 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 a very special way to spend time with somebody um so i i think that's one of the things i do like about about cruises that you can do it at any stage of your life um you know, last last year we took our, our one year old granddaughter. So you know, it, it's it's really special. Mark, yeah, like marking that. milestones um, like yeah, yeah, like that, like that cruise with your mom. Being able to enjoy it at different points in your life. Mm -hmm. I think. My my dad passed a few mm. years ago, and you know, uh, I think all the not all the I think a lot about you know what it would have been like to cruise with him. Uh, and then, the, and then the pandemic came. Did you uh, did you do anything uh, noteworthy in the pandemic? Some people do things uh, Ooh, uh, noteworthy. Um, grow a garden, run a marathon. Oh me, me personally. Yeah. Um, no, I I worked. <laughs> um, I was one of those weird people that had to go to work. So um, basically, I went to work and I queued in supermarkets. That's about it. I didn't know. Um, I I did actually um, do some sort of cruise stuff during during lockdown, but mainly um, no, I I just was very boring. I didn't. I mean, I think Emma Emma had a good time. She you did a lot of Zumba or something. I seem to remember Emma. I did a lot of uh, keep fit classes and Zumba. Um, I think it was the fight of the Wi Fi in our household <laughs> because Oliver was trying to do his A levels. Dave was trying to work on Google Teams and. Um, my eldest James was trying to uh, do his Phase Five cadetship via Zoom, and the poor Wi-Fi was just screaming. So um, yeah, it was a bit of a madhouse here. <laughs> so, so what were some of your uh, highlight uh, cruises, BC, uh, Emma? We'll be right back. The Joy of Cruising podcast guests receive a gift sponsored by GigSky of a three gigabyte cruise plus land data package valued at $60. Relying on ship Wi-Fi is slow, unsecure, and sometimes not available. And at foreign ports, travelers don't want to pay their carriers high fees. GigSky provides a solution that will save them a significant amount of money. To get your own data package usable on the ship or in ports, here is my link to GigSky. HTTPS forward slash floor forward slash gigsky.pxf.io forward slash NLOXOR. This can be found in the show notes below. For a 10% discount, use the code Joy of Cruising. Oh, before COVID, um, I would say probably cruising the Mediterranean on Holland America 
um, with my children as teenagers because we all could eat together and we enjoyed the shows together. Going ashore, we could all join in in the in the go for, on the beaches or for for a swim. When we were traveling with, with them as younger children. They always had their own kind of agenda. It was, um, we're off to the kids club, we'll, we'll see you at bedtime. And we never saw them. They were always gone. So I think the highlights were when they were older and we could actually go and do things ashore. And they wanted to come ashore and have experiences and realise where they were in the world. Um, and so that's probably the highlight for me, watching it through their eyes. Well, it certainly had a lasting impression, at least on your son. <laughs> <laughs> it did indeed, because when he was five, he said to me when he grew up, he wanted to be a sleeping policeman. Now, in England, a sleeping policeman is a bump in the road that slows the traffic down. Oh. So I don't think you quite understood what a sleeping policeman actually did. Okay. I've never heard I've <laughs> never heard that term before. <laughs> well, it's it's a speed hump, a speed bump, but it's a sleep, we call it a sleeping policeman. Oh, okay. So okay. he thought he would do that as a job. But <laughs> he went on his <laughs> he went on his first cruise at five, and then by eight he wanted to be captain. So he actually knew by the time he was 12 and taking forward career paths seriously, that was his route. Now, for each of you, what was your first cruise back? OK, well, I could answer that. Or we can go. We, we went together. That was the first cruise back. I, I, I kind of I kind of <laughs> suspected you. Did. We went on the first cruise that sailed from Southampton with MSC. It was a taste Tester cruise. It was, I think, three nights. Was it, Kathy? Yeah. Three nights, and it was called a staycation cruise. And we went to somewhere <laughs> on the south coast of England because we had to stay within the UK surroundings, and we had to become a bubble in our own group on the ship so we could eat together and sit together. That was virtuoso, right? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've uh, hosted quite a few. Took one. Of, I guess it was a couple of virtuoso uh, cruises, and, and I've hosted quite. So there were some folks on there that you knew. Uh, there was, yeah, there was a lot on board. We knew there was only two hundred people, um, and I probably think we knew wow. about fifty. <laughs> wow, I, I'm hearing that UK residents had kind of their pick of ships because so many ships could leave out of out of UK and couldn't leave in, out of anywhere else. So Yeah, that that's that's right, but they did a staggered start. So not all the fleet were launched at the same time. Um so Virtuosa literally set the ball running. They came in and they put the plan in action and MSC were the first to bring the faith back into it was safe to to be back on an environment where you're enclosed rather than being outside in the open. You could sit in a restaurant or a bar um, and you could be in this environment. Going ashore was a little bit more um, challenging because you had to go within the bubble of your tour and everybody in your bubble had to go with you. The children had to go with you whether they wanted to or not. So it was early stages, baby steps. We did um, P&O Britannia in the summer months uh, but they didn't bring all the fleet back because you couldn't crew the ships the crew were still stuck overseas in india or the philippines so they just did it slowly one ship at a time and you know a lot of the ships you could still see anchored off the dorset coast just being held waiting to come back into service so talk about each of you talk about your latest cruises and I suspect they might be together. No, you mean the one the next one coming? Well, so give us some highlights of some recent cruises. Okay. Uh what do you call that? AC after, after COVID. COVID. Okay, well we did a couple together. Um I did a big one to America. Um, really at the tail end of COVID when the testing was still in force. We did 25 nights to Canada and America. Um, oh, my that goodness, was, 25 That was nights. a good one. Yeah, Kathy did a long one as Could well, I didn't you, for the Pacific? Yes, I did Auckland to Vancouver this spring. Wow. Yeah. How long was that 24, one? 24, I think. 
24 nights. Wow. 25 nights, 24 yeah. nights. I tell you, we we did our first uh, transatlantic not too long ago. And I think that was like 16 nights. And it was fine for me, but it was driving my wife crazy. <laughs> oh, that's... The, first, the first eight days were sea days. And around day six or seven, she was like, I need land. I need land. I need land. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, see, I really enjoyed the transatlantic part because we went from Southampton to Cornerbrook in um, Newfoundland. And as we got closer to land, the sea became like a mill pond. And I could have just sat there every day in that conditions. It was just beautiful. It was so peaceful and restful. And there wasn't the traffic or the, the noise or anything like that. It was paradise. I'm, I'm like you, and I love sea days. Give, give me sea days over over port stops most of the time. I mean, it depends on the port stop, but but uh, yeah, I, I just like to relax. Now, 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 how for each of you those two long cruises? How long? What was the longest time period for which you had sea days? What was what, you know? What was the longest time you were at sea? We um. Uh, to be honest, I honestly couldn't tell you because um, we crossing the date line completely confused everybody and everything. So I was on <laughs> Grand Princess. Well, we were on mm-hmm. Grand Princess, and I really find it hard to believe because that the, we were not the first princess ship to to cross the international date line. I'm quite sure, but the app stopped working. You know the Medallion app app. Oh wow! So. Even the ship didn't know what day it was. Um, (laughs) So it it was sort of putting things up and then taking them down again. So people were going around going, is it Tuesday? No. Is it? And so we we were wrong for, well, until we got to the next port where they obviously got someone to reset it. But I, I think it was, you know, (laughs) <laughs> Mine was definitely a week. I didn't have that hassle. <laughs> we just sailed to America. Easy. <laughs> so, so, so yours, Emma, was you know, a week straight of yeah. sea days. Yeah. Which ship? Which ship was were you on? Uh, you Sky Princess. Said. Yeah, Sky, Sky Princess. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, what are, What are all the highlights that that uh, you all have uh, uh, had? Post COVID, um, well, I I'll, I can answer that one. I went on the Island Princess um, last summer, and we went to the land of the midnight sun. Oh wow! So it was all the beautiful Norwegian ports. Uh, Tromso is stunning. We went um, on a, a picnic it- um, excursion, a, a a beach picnic. We we picnicked in the fjords. On Golden Sands, we paddled. It was a beautiful, hot, sunny day. We sat with reindeer on the beach next to us. We foraged for cloudberries. We visited Lofoten Islands. And we went to right to the top of Europe, um, to North Cape. Every day for two weeks was absolute beautiful sunshine, 25 degrees, clear skies. It was miserable at home. In England, everyone had rain. We had taken the most spectacular weather with us. And I fell in love with Norway that since then I've been to Norway twice more. And I'm going again in March and I'm going again in July because I love Norway. <laughs> now, are you going Are you going on Princess again or are you trying a different Yes, line? no, I'm going with on Emerald Princess and I'm also going on p and Aurora. So I have two okay. different companies. But yes, okay. um, Princess again. <laughs> that cruise that I said I had uh, in late 25 out of Southampton, that's going to the fjords. Oh, you will love it. Yeah, 
But it's on uh, it's on NCL uh, uh, Prima. Yeah, big shit. Very nice. Seen that one. How about you, uh, Kathy? What what are some of the other highlights that you've had uh, in in recent times? Have you have, have either of you tried Queen Anne yet? Uh, yes, I've been on Queen Anne. So she's yeah. she's like she's like the other queen's naughty little sister. Okay. Why, uh, she, she's she's not ballroom. She's disco. Why do you say naughty? <laughs> naughty. Um, because she's aimed at a different audience. She's not kind, with kind the ballroom a, dancing. Kind of a yeah. younger crowd. Yes. She has a much younger vibe, and the the queen's room isn't a grand ballroom. It's it's uh there's there's um light screens for for light effects behind the DJ and and things like that. So it's it's not designed like the other queens. She's uh, she's she's yeah she's quirky and she's got a fun element. Two weeks ago, got back home from my first river cruise, so we went through. Lots of lots. Have you, have either of you or both of you been on a river cruise? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was last. I did mine in um, July. Kathy did hers in October. So I, I probably did the, the last one and, and I did mine in the summer. So it was glorious. Um, and then Kathy and I did one last year in the summer, which was also glorious weather. Um, but the, the last one I've just done on Riviera cruises um, we did the Rhine and it was spectacular. Where did you sail, Paul? Uh, Amber Waterways. Okay. What what route did you do? Uh, it was uh, southern France. Uh, it was it was um, the Rhone, right? No. Right, yes. Rhone. Yeah, the Rhone. 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 Mm-hmm. Okay. Rhone. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, yeah. In fact, we we actually went on. They have a really nice uh, excursion program. On Alma Waterway, so we, we we actually went to a winery uh, and and got you know got the grand tour, and then they had a they gave us uh, or they did a they hosted a jazz concert in the winery, and we got to uh, sip some of their wine, so it was really nice. And then it ended it it ended with a three day excursion uh, to Paris. So it was Perfect. it was quite it was quite a trip. So so you mentioned Riviera and and Kathy uh, is, is that the line you went on as well? Yeah, we we both went on Riviera separately. Yeah, I did a gastronomy cruise. Yeah, my mine was a gastronomy cruise. So they took us to um, to different places that the the customers weren't actually going to. So we were the the test pilot so to speak and we went on a an open top double decker cable car up a mountain from Lucerne uh-huh. just outside Lucerne in Strasserhorn um and we ate a beautiful um it was a cheese pasta dish with cubes of potato but it's served in a big metal saucepan and and you keep the saucepan on a heat like a fondue you, you spoon a bowl of this and then it just keeps hot on, on the flame. And it's a speciality, the cheeses for that area. And then where you said about doing the um, the wine tasting, when we went into Germany, the German section of the Rhine, we went vinegar tasting. Vinegar tasting. Vinegar tasting. And it was the best excursion ever. We went to this private residence in a place called Vinegan, and everything is in the basement. But before we could enter where the barrels of the vinegar were being stored, we had to put on cloaks exactly the same as like in the traitors on the television. So we all had our hoods up and we all looked like we were in line in the traitors going to be faithfuls or traitors like on the television. And then you go downstairs to where the vinegar is kept and it's all candlelight and opera music and you have to bow to the mother the vinegar mother and then you taste all the different vinegars it was brilliant now that that television show you mentioned that must that must be a a, a british show because i'm not familiar although i don't watch a lot of television is that is that in the u.s uh, it's, it's in it's yeah it's both america and 
and the UK. They've just done an American version. That's a, a vinegar tasting. Now, the you traitors. know, once I went, where, where were we? I guess this was somewhere in Spain. I went on an on an olive yeah. oil tasting. <laughs> I kept I kept waiting for the wine to come out. It was it was it, you know they had cheeses and 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 another other nibbles, but all they all they served was olive oil. <laughs> oh, uh, now what what happens at a vinegar tasting? I guess it's different. Flavors like balsamic and uh, very simple, very different flavors. It was to do with the way they were um, their ingredients, so whether they were lighter in color. It was very similar to if you went sherry tasting. So you went through from very light sherries to very dark color sherry. So it was a similar process, but they all had such beautiful names, um, like an- uh, Angels Weeping was the one I bought, and that's very good for fish and for pasta. And then some of them are for more homeopathic or for digestive or whether, I mean, they talk to you about Cleopatra. She would bathe in vinegar because it was a very good antibiotic. And so they weren't all to be consumed. You could use them homeopathically. If you've got stung by a bee, you could use the vinegar. Um, So it all has healing purposes as well. So we were given a glass that was probably a foot long stem and it had a little swirl in the bottom third of the stem, and it had a very small thimble size glass on the top, and you held the the stem just under the swirl at the bottom, and you raised your arm so that you sipped. It didn't go into your mouth in a big amount. You literally just sipped the vinegar. So, And then we had different nibbles, not olives. We had breadsticks, but also we had chocolates that were made with vinegar as well so you could just feel the the sweetness of the vinegar because these were very sweet vinegars you it was quite nice just to drink them hope you know to have a sip of them as a digestive or an aperitif all to do with your digestive systems but they had them as chocolates as well so it was really one of the best tours I, I if anyone is taking a riviera river cruise do the gastronomy one because the vinegar tasting is exceptional forget wine tasting after this it's all about the vinegar <laughs> yeah I, I, every time i do a podcast i learn something new and uh i i definitely had never heard of a vinegar tasting yeah no it, it was um one of my favorites in fact they took us to a chocolate factory when we went to cologne and we all went oh chocolate well, we'd rather go to vinegar <laughs> <laughs> I, I I will say at that uh, at that olive oil tasting they did have not not chocolate olive oil but they had chocolates to 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 take with the olive oil. Oh, wow. it was kind of odd, you know. Like I said, I, I I mean I enjoyed it, but I kept waiting for the wine to come out. <laughs> hey, I heard that uh, uh, Kathy Emma was telling me uh, that. that that you all just visited Sun Princess. How'd you like that? We did. We did. Yes, it's very different, especially obviously because we we're both big fans of Princess. Um, so to see where they're going to take the brand next was was really interesting. Um, and yeah, a very different sort of ship in all sorts of ways, really. Um, Fascinating to see the big dome up on the top and the space that gives them for a, an extra performance space. Um, we didn't see the swimming pool that went with it because it was all sort of shut off by the stage. Lovely um, space. And then the sanctuary, which we both expected to be at the bow, is at the stern so it was that kind of thing you know suddenly everything you thought you knew about the ship was wrong um so we very classy very sort of very similar to celebrity beyond that kind of vibe um slightly more modern classic than princess has been before it's always generally been quite comfortable Mm -hmm. furnishing kind of wise Mm -hmm. Um, even just things like the pool in the sanctuary was a beautiful shade of, of aqua blue and really, really 
unusual and all the furnishings were sort of toning with it mm -hmm. very nicely done mm -hmm. um, it was a shame it was throwing it down with rain so um that didn't help <laughs> You you mentioned Celebrity Beyond. Uh, have you yeah. have you been on Beyond? Mm, yes, yes. Um, I did a, a a cruise when when she was very new. Yeah, and uh, oh, lovely. Yes, I, I'm a big fan of Celebrity. I mean, I, I know I keep saying Princess, but it's partly because um, for the longer voyages, Celebrity really does get quite expensive from the UK. Um, but no, I'm a huge fan of celebrity. Yeah, but the um, Beyond is actually uh, my favorite ship. Although ah. my next cruise, uh, I guess it's what uh, November, is on Celebrity Ascent. So my expectation is yeah. it's everything Beyond had, but a little better. Yeah, beyond, beyond, so to speak. Um. I think they're all quite similar, aren't they? I mean, I think they're all similar, but they do a very good job of differentiating them with the artwork and things on board. So I I really like that. I I particularly like the doves um on beyond, you know, that, that beautiful sort of statue up on, on the deck with the um the black and white wings that go together and of course the elephant i thought the elephant is completely balmy um i i like all that i i like ships in fact we were talking about this on monday because we went on valiant lady for the day and resilient oh you see yeah there we are resilient lady yeah um and all the all the ships, all the Virgin ships, are virtually identical. There's very little difference. Brilliant there lady. are very few differences between them. <laughs> um, but we were talking about whether that. So someone was saying they loved the fact that they were all almost exactly the same because they can just get on board. They know where they're going. They know what they're doing. Um, they can just have a relaxing time. And I thought, I think for me, they'd all blur into one. You know, I think um, I, I'd rather remember a ship by the by the differences between them. I think maybe is what I was thinking about mm -hmm. it. So, so Emma, you were mm -hmm. on uh, Virgin Voyages with Kathy or separately? No, we just went on Monday. We were invited on to have a tour of the ship on Monday. So we had Sun Princess Sunday, and we stayed in a hotel overnight in Southampton and then drove down to Portsmouth International Docks, which is starting to welcome quite a few more cruise ships in there. So it's, it's a bit of a smaller dock, smaller ship. And we were on board Resilient Lady from around um, half past 11 till about three in the afternoon. So just in time to see the ship and have lunch in the galley um, and some bubbles, because everyone wanted to have some bubbles. So a glass of bubbles on the back deck and then off we got <laughs> so so you haven't uh neither of you have sailed virgin yet no we've not sailed yet we've not been yet. on um when just before covid in fact three days before we went into lockdown well not quite uh, maybe a month before we went into lockdown we went on scarlet lady in dover when she first ever came into the uk she'd come up from italy and I think it was the February, wasn't it, Kathy? The weather was awful. And we had two, night, two nights on board in Dover on this brand new concept, Richard Branson's first ever Scarlet Lady. Um, I think, Kathy, you visited Valiant Lady overnight. You went to Valiant and then in Tilbury, and then we've just done Resilient. So we've only ever done them in a UK port as a ship visit okay we haven't actually set sail on one so it's it's on the agenda um but they're so yeah i think i think it's on the agenda it's just trying to yeah you know i said celebrity yeah. beyond is my favorite ship but after just one cruise so it's not like i'm an expert after one cruise on virgin voyages which was scarlet lady that's my favorite cruise line uh, I I just feel like it's a, 
I, the way I describe it is a playground for adults, you know? And and they even have yes. playground, uh, you know, equipment, <laughs> you know? Yep. <laughs> they got the swings and the seesaw. Yeah, I was on a seesaw <laughs> with my wife, you know? And I, that's something that I would never have imagined. <laughs> uh, Pajama parties. Yep, yep. So I, I am booked on, uh, what's the new one? Is a Brilliant Lady? Brilliant lady. Yep. So I'm, Brilliant lady. I'm hoping that, you know, because cause like Kathy said, you know, they're all the same and she wants something different. I'm hoping that that brilliant lady has some differences from uh, the other ships. But we'll see. I haven't really heard anything yet. And I'm not booked until early 26. So, uh, so let's talk about Cruise Addicted. Talk about the creation of your brand. Okay, well, I'll I'll start with this one. So we, we've just turned eight years old. Um, so eight years ago, the, the group was set up. It had a different name at the time. It was set up by actually a, a different lady called um, Becky, and she had sailed on one cruise and thought this was everything she loved about holidaying and set up a cruise group. Uh, a little bit naively, maybe, but very brave thing to do. And I met her on a cruise and became a moderator for the group. So then we kind of ran this group alongside for about four years leading up to COVID. And then COVID happened. And it wasn't the industry that Becky wanted to be part of. She was never going to take a vaccine to allow her to be on the ship, which was the way the cruise lines were going forward, which is absolutely fine. That's her personal choice. And um, her life was just going in a different tangent and she felt herself moving away more from the group. I kept it going throughout um, the COVID years and literally when Kathy and I sailed on the first post-COVID cruise um, and we could sit and have a chat about the whole situation, Kathy said, well, let's take it on together. So at that point, we addressed the situation with the original lady that opened up the group. And um, she was more than happy for Kathy and I to, to step in and rebrand and keep the, the ship sailing, basically. And then we've gone really pretty much from, from strength to strength. The YouTube is now coming up. Instagram's growing nicely. And we have a fabulous community on our Facebook um, group, 17 and a half thousand very friendly members. Um, it's a really safe space, I think, for, for ladies as well that want to come and ask questions. It's, you know, they know they're not going to be shot down by somebody that's, you know, happy to sit at a keyboard and just type a a, a bit of a sarcastic comment. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we, we have the policy that um, every question is a great question mm -hmm. and every question should be, you know, answered seriously. Now, was the name Cruise Addicted from the beginning or did you all rebrand it when you took it over? Um, well, it was called, uh, I have to think back eight years now, we were called something along the lines of Rate, Rant and Review. And that was a bit of a daft name. <laughs> and then it was rebranded to Cruise Addicts. But we were aware there was another Cruise Addicts in America. So when Kathy and I kind of stepped in, we didn't want to take it beyond what people were familiar with. So we just thought if we made it from Addicts to Addicted, it was still a familiar name. We still had the same logo. We weren't steering it too far away that our members couldn't find us. Mm -hmm. So we kind of just, let's just small steps. So we've been cruise addicted probably for, I think, three years. And I don't think anyone could remember us actually being called cruise addicts, to be fair. Um, I think it just feels right that we're cruise addicted. Funny, funny that you mentioned cruise addicts because uh, they'll be on the show in a couple of weeks. So I... I think they're on, uh, I, I should have my calendar in front of me, and I don't, but I think they're on a couple of weeks before you're on, so. Okay, oh, well, that's that's okay. Um, it was, you know, I think it was just one of those, it's a great name, um, and you kind of set it up, and you think you're the only one, and then you realize in another country there, there's another one. But as far as I know, and touch wood, we are the only cruise addicted. <laughs> Now, you, you've been uh, Cruise Addicted has been recognized for your efforts by being selected as a finalist for this year's Wave Awards. Is, is 
is that your is this your first time making the shortlist? I think it's either our second or third, is it, Kathy? I think it's our second or third, definitely. But it's nice to be um nice to be recognized. It's uh, very nice to be recognized, isn't it, Kathy? Yeah. It it's always gratifying, isn't it, that someone's taken the the effort to um to nominate you and and that people have actually taken the effort to vote for you. Because our group is so international, um, probably only about, well, less than half of our members are from the UK. So we tend not to sort of push it to the group and say, oh, please come and vote for us or anything, because um, it's not really fair. The, the competition that goes alongside it and things like that isn't open to to the majority of our members so we we don't kind of um publicize it particularly to the group and say oh please all vote for us or anything because really there's no point so we don't expect at all to be kind of um to go any further than we have but it's lovely to be recognized and because emma and i really don't fit the mold of the majority of the sort of people orientated group um bloggers and vloggers so everybody else really is a person whereas we're almost sort of trying to be cruise addicted rather than to be Kathy and Emma um, if that makes sense so um, you know it, it it's not as easy for people to fall in love with us well, don't put that. don't put it like that <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh, that sounds kind of sad <laughs> I just, you know, we're really not about us. I, and I, I don't, I don't want. To, what I don't want to do is make it sound as if we're against, you know, people that are, or, um, you know, most of the people. It's a, it's a personal brand. You know, Jenny Cruise Money, uh, Mummy who won last year. You know, it's, it's very much Jenny, um, and because there's only Jenny, and it's her. She is the brand because she is a mummy and she likes to cruise. I mean, it's, it's a very nicely packaged um you know story but you know we're up against really a lot of very talented other media and uh, cruise content creators so um everyone deserves to be on that list there's some really good colleagues there and we all get together actually when we're on ship visits and uh you know especially on some princess over the weekend we had a lovely time dancing and you know having a glass of fizz with everybody. It's really good to get together. I, I think for, for Kathy and I, we are both live quite a way away from each other. So actually, when we saw each other on Sunday, we hadn't actually seen each other for over a year. So everything that we run with the group is done remotely via FaceTime or telephone. Um, Kathy's married to Tony and has her life in Kent. I'm married to Dave and have my life on the island. So a lot of our um cam- well, we'll we'll look forward to it either way. <laughs> Have are the face of, but we we quite like being the brand rather than the face of. Because if I go on a holiday, I can represent it as it as cruise addicted. We don't need to travel together. Well, just don't sell yourself short. You know, I, like I did last year with Cruise Mummy. I have vowed, and she had been on the show before, but I have vowed this year that that I'm going to invite the winner on. So I might be seeing you both again real soon. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be... Well, we'll, only, that would, we'll that look would... forward to it either way. <laughs> what are you working on now at Cruise Addicted? You, you, anything special? I'm putting, yeah, well, Kathy does these great cruise planners, which we... we you know, she'll she'll talk about those, but those are always in the pipeline. She's always making. She's a genius at making notebooks and planners and um, A4 pads and things. So those are really good fun. I'm working on some videos. I've got some cruise videos to get up online. So I've been a. It's been a little bit of a hectic time for me. Um, but I've got some videos in the pipeline from got to get the vinegar tasting up. I haven't got that up yet. So the Rhine cruise has got to come up. Um, so I've got to get the Rhine river cruise up. I think I've done something since then, but I have no idea what it is because it all just blurs into one after a while. <laughs> now, now has cruise addicted ever done, or do you see in your future 
a cruise addicted group cruise? We've never done one. Um, and to stay clear, because we have, as I said, well, as Kathy's just said, we have probably a third of our members in Australia, a third of our membership base is in America, and then a third is in the UK. So trying to get enough people to want to do the same thing on the same ship at the same time mm -hmm. for us would be quite challenging. But every time I book a cruise, you can be guaranteed I will never travel alone. There'll always be, I oh, will come with you, we'll come with you, we'll come with you. So I end up with about 10, 15 people coming with me. So that's as about as, as group as I get. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, tell our listeners how uh, they can keep up with Cruise Addicted on social media and the internet. Well, they can find us on our Facebook group, Cruise Addicted group. Uh, we also have a Cruise Addicted page. So if you're not a fan of being part of a group where people are asking questions, you can just follow us on our page. So things that we do will come up so you can keep in, in touch with us that way. Uh, we have a Cruise Addicted team Instagram page. So um, where I'm a photographer, a lot of my stuff is visual. So it's quite good for me to use the Instagram base. I make the reels and, and stories and bits and bobs like that. And Kathy does all the, the great write-ups and things. And then we have our YouTube channel, Cruise Addicted. And again, that's pretty much the, the visuals that... I've recorded over the year. Um, I think Kathy's got some stored up for me from um, her time traveling up over the Pacific. So we've got quite a bit of. Uh... Yes, once you stop going on cruises, then I can send you some of mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we've got quite a bit of content to come. So yeah, keep watching, everybody. <laughs> so so let, let's talk about the future. Uh, so we've got some great ships coming out in, well, some have come out already in 24 and, and 25. So you've already been on Queen Anne. Let's see, what else came out this year? Icon came out, Utopia came out, Sun Princess came out. And I know there's some, 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 some big ones coming out in 25. Are you anxious to try any of the, the ships about to come out or, or have recently come out? We've booked to go on Queen Anne. So I've, I've got that in, I think, 2026. Um, as far as Icon and Utopia, I'm not in any rush to try those just yet. They are possibly a bit big for me. Also, Paul, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of flying. I do fly, but I don't fly very far. Um, if it comes to Southampton, yes, I'll give it a go. Um, so I, I tend to cruise more from the UK. Kathy is more adventurous where it comes to long haul flights. And I think she's got one coming up at the latter part of this year. Yeah. But Princess again. So yeah, yeah. Let's <laughs> let's talk um, about yes. <laughs> uh, what, what do you have booked, Kathy? You go first. Yeah, so I'm going I'm going out. I've only got one cruise booked at the moment. Um, I've just had to have some surgery. And so what until that was over and done, I wasn't um able to to book but that's all done now so um i'm heading out to uh miami to join enchanted in november okay enchanted princess um and that's quite nice actually because going back to the um going right back circling back to the pandemic while we were all sort of sitting on on social media when that was all going on i actually made friends with a chef who said he was the chef for princess and he was up a mountain in, in Romania, I think, and um, he didn't look like he was a princess cruiser's chef, but, you know, that was fine. And we chatted and he sent me pictures of food and I commented on them. And anyway, he actually did turn out to be the executive chef on board Enchanted Princess. <laughs> so when Emma and I went with on board last year, Emma, the year before? Year before, I yeah, year remember. before. Yeah, before now, yeah. So when we were on board, we, we caught up with him and that was really lovely to meet in person. And uh, I'm hoping to catch up with him again, hopefully go on the 360 tasting experience. Um, that that, that, that wasn't Chef Rudy, right? No, not Chef Rudy, no. This is, this is Chef Daniel, Dan, Daniel Chanchev. And um, 
yeah so it was quite it was quite funny actually Paul because we were on the Enchanted Princess and you look at the board with all the officers listed the captain the deputy captain and everybody and there's a picture of the head executive chef and Kathy's looked at it and she says oh my god <laughs> that's my Daniel <laughs> what <laughs> what that's my Daniel that's my Daniel <laughs> yes that's quite funny Kathy laid claim to uh, Daniel, <laughs> Chef Daniel. That was quite funny. <laughs> you know, I on, on uh, when I was on, uh, uh, and oh, this okay. is not any. I'm not saying this because of you, Kathy. So, so don't take it the wrong way. <laughs> but when I was on uh, uh, Emma Emma Christina last week or a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, there was a day where we met the, uh, the the captain and his staff, and the captain was was a tall, uh, good-looking guy. Probably the second thing he said out of his mouth was, uh, ladies, I'm married. <laughs> <laughs> which, 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 which tells me he knows he's a tall, good-looking guy. He was obviously addressing the wrong audience, maybe, though. He should have said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm married. <laughs> yep. May yeah, I guess so. <laughs> so... So, Emma, what do you have booked? I've got a few booked. Um, I've got Virtuosa in two weeks. Um, so that's uh, coming up soon, followed by Queen Victoria for the Christmas markets in December. I'm going to Norway to try and find the Northern Lights um, in March. And I will be on Princess in July, heading to Iceland um, because I just like going where it's cold. <laughs> so we're celebrating our 30th wedding anniversary in 2027. Congratulations. As well, thank you very much. Um, still a couple of years off, but that will be a Pearl wedding anniversary. So we kind of have in our mind that we need to go diving for sea pearls in Bora Bora. Wow. So we're kind of trying to make that happen. Um, so whether it's going to be on Windstar or Holland America or NCL, we're not sure. I'm still looking at the itineraries or waiting for the itineraries to go live. And then I will decide how I get there with the least amount of flying. <laughs> yeah, we we uh, we did the Mediterranean for our 30th. That was the one that we uh, sailed uh celebrity beyond so maybe maybe 35th will be in bora bora well there you go yep yep I, 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 isn't 35 coral so i think that would be quite good there, <laughs> you, know, you just uh sealed the deal <laughs> so before we let you go and this has been this has been a lot of fun but a couple of light even dare i say fun cruise questions so so the first one is it's pretty simple. It's just so that I can steal some ideas, and I've gotten some great ideas from this question. So, first one is, what's your favorite cruise drink and cruise food? I would say my favorite drink is a Miami Vice, which is half pina colada and half strawberry daiquiri. I love that. Well, we, 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 we have something in common. Emma, that is my favorite drink as well. Is that your favorite one too? Yeah. It used to be and... my favorite cruise drink. It used to be pina colada until I, dis well, yes. until I discovered Miami Vice. Miami Vice is the one. I think you will, if my if you ask my husband, he would um, have to say it was a dirty banana. But I will always stick with the, I will always stick with the um, Miami Vice. My favorite cruise food now I'm not sure whether they still serve it, but on Holland America, there was the Tamarind restaurant and they did a beautiful red Thai curry with the biggest prawn crackers I've ever eaten in my life. And that was the most delicious meal I've ever had on a cruise ship. So I would have to say the red Thai curry with prawn crackers. All right. Uh, uh, Kathy, looks like we got you back. Favorite, favorite uh, drink and favorite cruise food? Oh, um, I generally drink a Hugo Spritz, which is elderflower liqueur and Prosecco. And it's sort of quite a long drink um, because I find I do better with long Isn't drinks. Isn't gin in that? Really good with shots. Um, <laughs> I think there yes. is. 
You made it sound like it was a diluted no, prosecco. A, you call it a, a Hugo spritz? Okay, so I've had I've had an Aperol spritz, but I've never heard of Hugo. No, they're orange, aren't they? I don't like them at all. They're bitter. No, Hugo oh, okay. spritz. It's, it's elderflower, so it's it's nice. I okay, okay. Wouldn't. Very nice. Well, I've, I've, I've got the I've got the drink package on my cruise that comes up in two weeks, so I will be uh, if they have it. I'll be. What line did you get it? Is that a is it a common drink or is it line specific? Um, yeah, I've had it on quite a few lines. I think Princess do it. Um, okay, okay. Celebrity. Yeah, I'm, go I'm I'm going on celebrity. <laughs> celebrity, yeah, celebrity definitely do it. Hugo Spring. Yeah, if you're going on Princess Ever, you want a dirty banana. I've had that. Yeah, yep. but you have too many. <laughs> you, if, when you get too full, you can't eat anything. How about our uh, food? <laughs> food, all. Um, breakfast. I will always end up having a an eggs Benedict, um, even if I think I'm not going to. I usually do, um, and I really like the double baked goat's cheese souffle that you get on wow you know, I'm, you know you know i've i've interviewed as obviously i've interviewed a lot of folks that has come up before i i guess i'm gonna have to go ahead and go on cunard <laughs> yeah i don't know i don't know if it's only because i went on a few cruises with cunard on, in the queen's grill and it, that's where i had it and i don't know whether or not it's everywhere on the ship, but so you'll have to do one of the grills to get baby. Um, but otherwise, ask. They're very, very nice. Looking. There you go. That's that's nice. For each of you, what is your most memorable, or funniest, or even most embarrassing cruise or port experience? I did dancing under the stars. Or Dancing with the Stars? Is it Dancing with the Stars, you call it? We call it Strictly Come Dancing in England. I think you call it Dancing with the Stars. Holland America do this take of the, the television show. And I had to do a cha-cha-cha, darling, with a dancer on the stage in front of a full theatre. And I got three tens. So I was very happy, but it was probably the most nerve-wracking, embarrassing, and hilarious moment of my life. Very good. I actually, I did a podcast, it's been about a year, and it was a, a former Holland America uh, cruise director. He was instrumental in getting that Dancing with the Stars on, on, on the television program. He was like a director of, of what they came up with for Holland America. So so that's a, that's that's an interesting episode if you want to hear how dancing dancing with the stars at sea ah, kind of it, developed. It was, it was his fault. It, that's, that's it. Dance with the stars at, uh, at sea. And literally, I'd taken my youngest to. I talked him into. I said, "Please come and do a dance class with me. I don't want to go on my own." And it was the cha cha cha. And we were having quite a giggle learning how to do the dance. And they came and tapped me on the shoulder and they said, you've been selected to dance on the stage in the show. Would you um, hang around and meet up with us afterwards? So I thought it was going to be, you know, quite funny. Then I had to go to rehearsals every day with this chap and learn how to do the cha-cha-cha. And I had to dress up. And it was so funny because there was this American gentleman who had been chosen as well to do a different dance and he had to have four whiskeys before he could even go on the stage because he was so nervous. <laughs> and he ended up half pole dancing around a section of the stage because he'd had these four whiskeys first. <laughs> he obviously won because he was hilarious and he just made everybody at ease because he was so nervous. <laughs> how about how about you, Kathy? What's your uh, most memorable, funniest or most embarrassing, or a combination of all three? Oh, I don't know. Um, I mean, most embarrassing was on, on Celebrity Constellation, where we were travelling from Dubai to uh, to the Far East, to Singapore. And I'm not quite sure where we were, but we had a little bit, which was a little bit rocky. Um, and I was partying away, having a lovely time, and I actually ended up sitting on my bottom, um, which <laughs> was actually not because of the weather. It was because of the Hugo spritzes. But, um, <laughs> when, I was, 
<laughs> Everybody was very sweet and said how rough it was and um, helped me up and sat me down and made sure I was okay. And I've always been a little bit more restrained on the dance floor since then. <laughs> Maybe just a tiny touch over the top. Uh, so uh... I'm a little more. While I don't want to fall on my bottom, I'm even more now <laughs> interested in trying Hugo Spritz. <laughs> they have they have some some kick, huh? <laughs> well, they're, because they're prosecco and and this liqueur. Yep. <laughs> they, um, they are. Okay. Uh, they, they do have the potential to be lethal if you have too many. Actually. Well, the la the last question. So you have a large following, and welcome to the cruise addicted fans and friends who might be listening. We hope you've enjoyed what you have heard and will come back to uh, listen to uh, future episodes. Uh, share one thing, each of you, share one thing that my listeners and your fans and friends don't know about Kathy and Emma. So um, they probably don't know that I actually have a day job. Um, this is equally my day job working with the beautiful cruise ships and doing videos but by day I sell wedding dresses I am a wedding dress consultant so I have lots of girls that come in and say yes to the dress so I spend most of the day crying because they look so beautiful <laughs> and I always ask them have they got a honeymoon booked and had they considered cruising or I get very excited if they're getting married on a cruise ship that appointment goes in a completely different tangent but by day I sell beautiful wedding dresses. And, and and now you only, I don't know a whole lot about buying wedding dresses, although I did buy one for my daughter. Uh, you, you, only, uh, you only sell them in UK, right? Yes, we are a small boutique on the island and we have probably about 200 dresses in the boutique. And um, when girls come in, I have to help them find their dream dress. Okay. No. On, is there any such thing as online uh, wedding dress sale? Uh, there, there are, but you are probably best with that expenditure to go to a professional boutique. Okay. Okay. In my opinion. Well, I, most wedding well, dresses are are built um designed for a six foot bride because it's easier to take fabric away from the bottom than add it on. So it's always best to to be with a seamstress and to be with a proper consultant that can talk you through the process. Okay. Well, I thought maybe I might get you a few uh, customers, but you know, we the, the, our, our second largest uh, clientele, if that's the right word, is is UK. So yeah, well, tell them to come down, or if it's if they come the day before they go on a cruise, then I'll book them in. All right, because <laughs> they were very close to Southampton. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about you, Kathy? Say one thing that my listeners and your fans don't know about Kathy. Oh, um, I'm a pretty open book, so they know lots of things about me. But there's something probably about me that you don't know, huh? um, which is that I don't really like to talk to you because you knocked me off the top spot on the Amazon bestseller list when your first book came out. <laughs> If the if the listeners could see my face right now, so yeah, yeah. so my my first book was called The Confident Port Explorer, and that's a, a book about going ashore on, on a cruise. So it's it's a sort of a, a how not to book, really, um, and what not to do and what to think about. And it came out at the end of two thousand and eighteen, and it was chugging along quite happily, and um, it was top ten for quite a while, um, and. It was doing great, and then come February, this upstart of an American truck called Paul Thornton suddenly published this book, and boom, gone. <laughs> Get out. And there you were. But um, actually, yours is... I, 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 I guess you would remember that, but... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's really funny. So, um, so I've kept an eye on you ever since and sort of followed your career, so I've forgiven you. <laughs> <laughs> well... That that is uh that is a very interesting story. I you know it, it, I vaguely do remember that there was a a cruise book. I don't I couldn't remember the name. You know because there's all kinds of cruising related books on that particular chart, but this book was like the same genre kind of of mine. That's a that is that is a great coincidence. Who knew that what five years later I'd be talking to you. <laughs> 
<laughs> so so uh, so tell our listeners they can still order your book, right? Yeah, I think so. Certainly in the UK you can. I don't know um, in the states probably, um, but yes, called the Confident Port Explorer. We we do a lot of cruise planners as well, so it's the cruise planner. Um, but if if you search Kathy Rogers on on um, Amazon, you'll find me. Okay. Okay. Well, this this, this gives me a, a good opportunity, uh, listeners. Uh, the book Kathy uh, is referring to that nudged her aside. <laughs> it was called it's called <laughs> the joy of cruising, and, and as Kathy said, it came out at the yes. beginning of nineteen, and uh, so 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 go to Amazon and check it out. You can read, I think, the first couple of couple of chapters on uh on amazon i didn't know that when i first did it and the 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 very first chapter is powerful i mean absolutely oh. powerful so yeah. or, 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 let's see it's the first real first story it's about uh a guy an amazing guy who ran marathon on ships and he had a great backstory if nothing else you get to read that chapter for free but i think after you read that chapter you might want to read some more well, 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 Kathy and Emma, thank you for coming on the Joy of Cruising podcast and all the best to uh, Cruise Addicted. I, I, I certainly hope we can get you back on here. You, you all do some great cruising and, and, and you have a great brand. I'd love to have you back. And as I said, I may have you back sooner rather than later because I'm going to have the Wave Award winner back. So I may see you again in a few weeks. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for having us. We'd love to come back. And uh, yeah, we, we may have some other weird and wacky experiences by then. You never know on our cruising adventures. But it's been a pleasure, Paul. Thank you so much for having us. We've really enjoyed this. Uh, as I like to say, we'll see you on the ocean. See you on the oh, ocean. That's lovely. Yeah, we'll see you on the ocean. <laughs> the Jar of Cruising and Cruising Interrupted each $16.99 plus shipping and new release, The Joy of Cruising Again for $18.99 can be ordered at the link on the Joy of Cruising Podcast.com. For each of the three books, use the discount code Joy of Cruising Podcast and get $4 off. The Joy of Cruising books are also available at Amazon. Order the ebook at Amazon or your favorite online retailer. Stay in touch by joining the Joy of Cruising Podcast Facebook group or following the Joy of Cruising Podcast on Instagram. We're constantly adding new shows. Please leave a review and tell a friend about us. We hope you enjoyed this brief escape to the ocean. See you next week.